Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome back. I have been traveling quite a bit. I was traveling the whole of August and it's, uh, it's September now and I do have some free moments here and there to shoot more. So I'll be putting out more videos in September. Uh, now, um, in this video, in today's video, we are building a very small project with Rust. So I had announced this 50 Rust project videos uh, a playlist. I had announced this playlist back in March uh, and then a lot of crazy stuff happened. I'll tell you about it. Now, I, I have this playlist for 40 Golang projects already and uh, so this is why I want to create a 50 Rust projects um, playlist because I, Rust is, you know, up there with Golang in my mind. I mean, I, I love it, I respect it, I use it a lot and I build projects on Solana and uh, Pol like with, with Polkadot, with Near Protocol. So I, I want you guys also to learn Rust, at, at least as much as I know. You should, I, I feel you guys should uh, know as much Rust as I know. So I, I wanted to build these 50 projects and today, starting today, we'll start building projects, right? So it's going to be, a, today's going to be a simple project and then we'll uh, in, like increase the level of complexity and the, the work that we do in each project. Uh, now, what happened was in, in April, I did shoot 10 videos for this playlist and then I gave it to some guy for editing those videos. And uh, I kept waiting to hear back from him. I never did. You know, I, I kept waiting that he'll probably get back to me after editing those videos but he just he just disappeared with all those videos and with my money <laughs> so it's a crazy story now the silly thing is uh i shifted my house at that time uh by the way i'm still traveling i'm at, I'm at my parents house now so i'll be going back to my city in, in a few days so i i was shifting uh, in my city like from one house to another house and i uh, misplaced that hard drive on which i uh, had stored those videos so um, I'm shooting all of everything again now uh, because I have time, so I'll be shooting everything again. But it was it was quite um, quite a big problem that I was I was in I was facing. So I will reshoot those ten videos and also I will like I'll complete this this whole playlist. Okay. The only problem like there's there's this big delay. Like I wanted to launch this in April itself, but then it's it's September now, and the only reason is because that guy disappeared um really unfortunate but anyways let's we'll get started now okay so i want you guys to learn rust with me at least as much as i know like i said you know uh, i want you guys to get really good at rust and we'll keep increasing the complexity in the, in the projects till the time you you almost become very very comfortable building stuff on the solana blockchain that's the final goal right okay so what i'll do is uh by the way i'm using uh windows so this is uh, this is my laptop at my home. You must have seen I, I used I used a PC you now on my on my laptop. On but on, on both the setting is quite same. I use uh, uh, Windows with Ubuntu on this laptop as well, and then I have multiple Ubuntu only laptops, and I have a Mac laptop, whatever. So this is uh, Windows with Ubuntu. Just wanted to, you to you know what I'm using, right? Uh, so here I I will CD into the place where I usually keep my projects and I will I probably have a project uh, like a folder dedicated to rust projects on like you'll find this on all of my laptops there's always a folder just for rust projects and just for golang projects just for python projects like that basically okay so I'm uh, I'm very casual with naming stuff so I just like write rust stuff <laughs> that's that's all I write sometimes but anyhow uh, the the way to start off a project is cargo new and you say compress uh, underscore YouTube so I'm building this over YouTube and the project is going to be called compress because essentially what we'll do in today's project is we're going to just compress a file that's all I'm going to show you today, right how to compress a file in rust so I just want to show you how easy rust is to use how, how easy it is to compress files with Rust and, and Rust is a great language, it's a great, great language. So we will cd into compress underscore YouTube, that's what I want and I will open this up in my code editor which is uh, VS Code in my case. Uh, I'm sure you can see it, yes I trust the authors of this file because I am the author so I trust this file. Uh, cargo.toml, uh, you already know that when, when you run cargo new you get a cargo.toml file which, which will have all your configurations and then you have you get a uh, git ignore file by default then you get an src folder which will have your main.rs so just like golang you have func main there you have fn main here and you get uh, print line hello world by default and this is the file that we need to change we need to change this file completely so i just realized that my face on the right side was covering two of the last commands that i wrote in the terminal i just wrote 
uh, cargo new and the name of the project which is compressed YouTube in case you didn't see it and then I just wrote co uh, like I cd'd into it I changed directory into it and then I said uh, code space dot which is basically to open up the VS code uh, editor sometimes people miss these lines and then they panic they freak out and then they start writing comments uh, on, on my <laughs> YouTube channel on the on the videos saying hey I didn't see this line your face was covering everything now just relax guys I mean there's <laughs> like there's no need to panic when you, whenever you're coding whenever you're uh, you know uh, building stuff don't ever panic whenever you see errors when you're not understanding things it's okay I mean uh, you know you'll, you'll practice more you'll get it always always have a very relaxed and uh, calm mind whenever you're building stuff whenever you're coding okay if you have a tendency to get to panic very easily if you have a tendency to get scared uh, you're not going to be a good developer trust me on that because you're, you're going to have so many challenges like I've seen such bad stuff right uh, like production servers fa failing and, and and shit happens and you need to just be very very calm and uh, you need to be able to handle stuff easily okay so uh, to do this right to do this whole thing um, I am going to use an external crate now there are crates right and then there are packages crates are just like uh, at a very crude level crates are just smaller packages so all I need to get right now is a crate uh, called flate2 which is going to help me compress my file so I'm going to say flate2 so when, whenever you're working with crates right you don't have to like say cargo install because many people coming from npm uh, or node.js background they do oh I have to get a new package working in my project so I'll say npm install so similarly you know cargo uh, you have cargo and rust so I'll say cargo install you don't have to do that you just have to write the name of dependency here uh, for when you're working with crates, when you're working with big packages, obviously you'll have to say cargo install. So here we just have to say this. That's it, uh, and that's all. That's the only thing that we're going to require to complete this project. It's, just, it's a very small, it's a tiny, tiny project. Okay, so uh, let's remove this for a while. Okay, uh, in in if you've watched any of my GoLang videos, you you know when we start, we write. Uh, we, we, we import the external packages so very similar very similar here external uh, you are uh, you know referring a external crate called flate2 we just we just imported that right uh, then I want to get some specific things from flate I want to get the GZ encoder now uh, for the longest times I've, I've, I've received a lot of errors in my own projects some some bigger projects that I was using because uh, many times you would not know that just this Z is, is actually a small Z it's not it's not or Z Z whatever you want to call it it's small it's it's not capital right so many uh, times I've made this mistake where I've written a capital Z and uh, it just kept failing again after again after again make sure you don't do that now uh, this is not flat this is flat 2 by the way and then you have compression because obviously we will be working with compression so I need compression then my standard uh, stuff is going to have environment and it's going to have args now I want to accept the name of the file to be compressed from the uh, user which is going to be me in this case I mean it's, it's a CLI tool that we're building right now is going to accept the name of the file that is to be compressed so that's why I'm getting access to arguments I want to work with file so I'll say fs file then now when I take a file and I compress it and I make a compressed version of that file I'm essentially copying that file to the compressed file so or the contents to the compressed file so you will have a you'll get copy then you want to before copying it and before creating the compressed file you want to read that file so you use buff reader you want to copy the contents right and this is something that I'll explain to you in a while okay but everything else makes a lot of sense and we'll use it right now and you know everything will make sense to you uh, only this one this one line I've not explained to you because I'll show it to you and then you'll understand <laughs> understand it's, it's a very common thing 
Okay, in case, okay, so what happens is sometimes when I say this, right, that I will explain it to you later, people again, somehow people again start thinking, oh, you know, I didn't understand this line, they start commenting. So just for you guys, for, for the guys who are like overly enthusiastic, uh, guys who panic a lot. Okay, so this line is uh, because when we want to show how much time it takes to copy and compress our file, that kind of stuff, only that, uh, I, I, I want to use this only for that part, right, where I'll, I'll, prop, I'll just output saying that, hey, this is the kind of time it's taking for the file to get compressed. That's all uh, the use for this is, okay. Now I want to, you know, keep some things for the end. I want to explain it on the go, but I've seen people like freak out very easily. I don't know why. So I'm trying to explain every single line as I write. Okay, so here you will say print ln, e print ln, and we'll tell the usage how do you how, how should this uh, tool be used so you'll have source and you'll have target so when when we run this program okay uh, and if the length is not equal to three what does that mean uh, now, now all of these things right all this kind of code is very self-explanatory and as soon as you read it you understand it but i'm still going to explain everything um because i've realized people they lose their shit <laughs> when i don't explain stuff it's very self-explanatory it's basically what's happening is that when you run this program okay it's it's supposed to expect three arguments which is the uh you know total three arguments so i like out of these you you're going to have source and the target files you know? the source which file do you want to uh compress and target which, which file do you want to uh what, what is the name of the file that you want after it's compressed so if it's if it doesn't have all of those arguments you will uh, you know you, you won't you'll, you'll have to tell them that hey this is how you're supposed to use it so even though it's self-explanatory there's nothing here i'm still explaining every single line not a very efficient way to work and according to me but whatever in, in case you guys are fine with me uh not explaining stuff Please let me know. That'll be great. There'll be a lot of help. Okay. So here you have buff reader, and then new. Then you have file. Open up the file. So what you're basically doing is it's going through the arguments and picking up the first argument, which is nth dot one, and you're going to. Um, basically, that this this argument is the argument for the source file. It's the first argument. That's the one that you want. That's the file that you will be reading using the buff reader. Okay, and this is the input. That's why it's called input. Now it's mutable because you want to mutate it and you want to create a compressed file out of it, so it will be mutable. Then you will create output so you'll say that output equal to file create and here you will create the name of the file which will be sent by the user in the uh, arguments again let's say unwrap dot unwrap so, by the way, in case you miss any of these unwraps, uh, which I, I miss all the time, I, I do that all the time. In case you miss any of these unwraps, it's okay. Uh, when you compile it, Rust is going to let you know that, hey, unwrap is missing here. It's going, to, it's going to let you know in the errors. Also, there's one more thing. Many people, when they run their programs, they, they get some errors and they start uh, copying and pasting these errors in the comments of uh, YouTube. Don't do that. Because YouTube, I think, doesn't allow those kind of special characters, firstly, and then they think that I deleted those comments. I don't, I don't have the time to delete your comments, man. It's YouTube's algorithm doesn't allow you to paste these kind of comments with special characters. It thinks it's spam in the, in the comments. I don't have time to check the comments. Sometimes I reply to the comments if they're good. I mean, if they're alleged questions. Uh, all right. So, um, so just letting you know, don't type all those comments there. Instead, I will leave a link to GitHub uh, for this project. Uh, in, in, the, in the video itself. So make sure you compare your code with that. Uh, copy and paste this code and then run it and then see 
compile your code not compile that's how you solve the error don't depend on other people to solve your errors for you you're supposed you are the developer you're supposed to debug it you're supposed to find the answer okay don't rely on don't outsource your thinking man that's that's really sad if you do that okay so we'll create an encoder and here's where we'll use the gz or gc whatever encoder with a z has to be small make sure the g is small and you will create uh you just default compression so let's say compression default all right and let's start it let's start it now so you we'll say instant now this is where i'm using that instant thing okay so now when the encoding has started for compression this is this is this line is the line where the magic is happening you have the input file, you have the output file. This is where the magic starts happening. What do you do now? So you say copy the mutable input and mutable coder dot unwrap. And then you say let output equal to encoder dot finish dot unwrap like i said if you miss any of these unwraps last will let you know so it's okay like don't try to remember where those unwraps are so it's going to tell you the length of the source input dot get reference dot metadata dot unwrap dot length okay and now i want to use the instant uh, instant rate that i'm using here for printing out the target length just a second i'll follow this it's, it's tried to complete it for me but it's not what i want i want target length comma output dot metadata dot unwrap where metadata and unwrap both need to have these brackets i i want to rely on these um uh the, the code completers and the automatic completion code completion i want to rely on it but you, you just you know it, it makes a lot of mistakes and elapsed time this is where i'm using the instant thing completely unnecessary i know but i'm just using it anyway just to show you one more thing you know it's like um uh, so don't let it like bother you don't let it con confuse you if you don't understand what i'm doing here i'm just showing the elapsed time uh and this line and this line if you don't understand it, it's completely okay don't con don't get confused these are not critical for the program to run i'm just showing you how much time has elapsed for compressing the file that is it because sometimes at least i don't like to wait when big files are getting compressed so i i like having something like this in the programs so all we have to do now is jump back here and uh, let me see if i'm in the right place i'm in the right place i want to have a small file so let me find Okay, I have this big uh, PDF because if I if I use a small um, P PNG, it won't it won't show you the difference in sizes, right? Because this compression mechanism that we're using, it's a good mechanism. It's not like you know the industry standard or the production level compression mechanism. It's a it's a you know just a good enough compression mechanism. So it'll it'll compress the file, but not to a very very huge extent. And I want to I want that to be visible at least. So the file has to be big enough. This is around two MB. It should become around one point eight MB, something like that. All right. Uh, so book dot PDF is what I want to send. So here, if I say cargo run, it will first sit and install and get all those uh, things. Okay. There there is there is an error here somewhere. Is an error. Uh, okay. Uh, I have forgotten a couple of small things here and there for example exclamation mark here so that's the beauty with uh, that's the beauty with 
mm, rust, you know, you get exactly what the issue is. So, line 14 is fixed. Uh, so, it is even telling me, now, so sometimes uh, Golang does not give you this, like such clear errors, right, such clear help, at least it does not give you the help, it gives you the error, it does not give you the help. With JavaScript, you get not, not even the errors correctly and help, so, you know, never get help. <laughs> With Rust, you get help. You, you, it tells you what to do. It's telling me exactly, like at this, this plus, telling you what to add. So, I, so what I believe is, even if you're very stupid, right, and you use Rust, you can still write good code. <laughs> at least I, that's what I've found. You know, I'm uh, like that. You know, I, I believe I'm pretty stupid, and uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not focused. I'm not like focusing a lot when I'm writing code. I'm just chilling most of the time. So when I write code and I, I, you know, I believe in just writing anything and then letting the program help you, the, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the compiler to help you at compile time. Many people get, they get, uh, they get nervous when I do stuff like this. But that's, that's because I've, I just have so much experience now. Uh, like I'm, I'm old. I mean, I have more than 12 years probably uh, of coding experience now. So, um, you know, I, I don't think much while coding. I just write whatever is coming to my mind, and then I run it. And then pro languages like Rust they they help me fix everything, as you can see on your own. You know, Rust is helping me fix everything. Okay, so even that's uh, so here instead of nth, nth, I have written net, so it helped me find that also. Um, okay, here also I think there is an issue. So on line twenty five, line twenty five seems to be the issue at line 25. So, input dot get reference metadata. Yeah. So, I used the, uh, you know, code completion for myself and look at where it has gotten me. So, uh, when I, and when I used to make the early videos on my YouTube channel, uh, I used to write everything, every single thing, uh, you know, on my own. I, I never used to use any plugins for VS Code. And that's how I've been doing it since forever. Only on YouTube, people have started asking me to, you know, why don't you use uh, this plugin why don't you use that plugin yeah i mean I'm, I'm you can see what happens when you use plugins right so i know where the issues are so i can fix them easily but many people for them it takes uh, hours sometimes to figure out what the issue is what the issue is right um and and i know where the issue is because i have written so much code on my own that when the auto completion makes those errors i, I can fix them very fast i know where those issues are but for somebody who's learning the language new they're relying too much on the code completion uh, plugins they're going to be in trouble right and also when you're applying for interviews you won't always have the best like your favorite code editor and the plugin installed there so you'll get in trouble so if you're preparing for competitive coding if you're preparing for some interviews at great companies uh, please don't rely on plugins you will get into a lot of trouble i've mentored a lot of developers they have uh, even though they were great developers they, they missed uh, some really good offers just because of this problem. All right, so uh, I hope everything should should work fine now. Yeah, so everything works fine. It's telling me now that the way to use it is <laughs> use source and target. So I knew that already. So I'm going to say book.pdf, use book.pdf, which is the file that I want to compress. And uh, I want to say that the compressed file, the name of the compressed file should be compressed file. It'll run it for me. It'll give me the lapse time. Almost it took like nine seventy six milliseconds. Uh, source length, uh, source length was around two point three MB, and the target length is one point eight MB, which is exactly what I want. Now uh, I'm using, like I said, WSL, which is an Ubuntu virtual machine inside of Windows. So to look at these files, I can say explorer exe space dot. In case you're using the same thing like me, let me show you properly. Uh, in case my face was covering it, let me show it to you. This is what I wrote, and this is what I got. Um, here you can see, maybe on my screen you can see, that the book file is, it, can, it shows here 2.3 kilobytes, 2.3 MB, sorry, which is 2,254 kilobytes. And the compressed file shows 1.8 MB, or 1,842 kilobytes. So that's it, the program works, that's it, everything is perfect. Um, you know, the, the birds are singing, the, the sky is blue and sun is shining, so everything's great and, and our program works. I leave this in, in GitHub. Please, uh, like, follow me if, if you're not following me. You get awesome stuff like this. 
uh, and we'll be building so many more projects right i have so much awesome stuff for you guys thanks for watching see you in the next video